Hi, my name is Ray with Water Heaters Now. What we have here is a Navian NPE 240A that we installed about a year ago. In fact, October 11th, 2018. And with a Navian tankless, you want to do a cleaning annually. And the first thing I like to do is just say thanks for purchasing a quality product and having us install it. We appreciate your business. We come out at year one and do the first cleaning for free. And then you have this video to show you how to do it from then on. So the reason that we do a cleaning every year, every other year at very minimum, is to keep the heat exchanger from gathering scaling on it. If you can keep the heat exchanger, which is stainless steel, running clean and smooth, this water heater could, there's no reason to think it couldn't outlast your home. And many companies will want to sell you a service contract and they want to be in your home every year. When we started this company, we thought, how can we set customers up to succeed and really help them to get the best out of their investment. So what we do is we come at year one and we do the cleaning for free and then we'll send you reminders every year with this video that teaches you how to service it yourself. We'll walk you through the process and we have phone support for eight hours a day during regular business hours to help you walk through if you have any concerns that the video doesn't answer. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing we're gonna do is follow the gas line and make sure that the gas is off. The gas starts here, and we follow the line over to the gas valve. We can see that the gas valve is by the manifold, so we're just going to take this handle and turn it to make a cross with the pipe. As with any valves, when the lever goes with the pipe, that supply is on, and when the lever goes against the pipe, making a T, that supply is closed off. After we have the gas off, we're going to turn the power off to the unit which is the bottom right hand button, the circle with a vertical line in it. We're just going to push that and hold it and that'll turn the power off. And then finally we're going to turn the water off down below the water heater. First let's take the cover off so that we can remove the cold air filter. There's four screws, two at the top and two at the bottom. And just take it and lift up so the lip on the top comes off and you can unplug the power to your water heater as a secondary insurance that the power is off. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the cold air intake filter and clean it out in case some bugs or gnats got in there. Now to do that there's one screw, the front left screw on the intake housing. We just have to loosen that up some by the design, this filter won't come out without it. And then there's one screw on the front of the filter that we're gonna remove before we can slide that whole filter out. So we have the cold air filter removed and as you can see there's a lot of debris inside there. Some from construction and some from bugs and such. So we're just going to dump that out in an empty bucket and we'll clean that out with a toothbrush and then reinstall the air filter. And you don't want to get this filter wet as you're doing it. So if you have a wet toothbrush or you think it's a good idea to get it wet first, that can actually give an error code on the water heater. So we just want to use a dry brush and get that clean, get all the debris off of it, and then we're ready to reinsert it into the water heater. All right, so then we're just gonna put the air filter back in. This notch right here goes into that slot. So we slide that in place, and then line it up so that the screw holes match. All right, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna drain the water heater. And the way we do that is through a series of valves. Let me point them out to you and describe what they are and what they do. This is the cold water inlet valve. So we're going to turn that off so that it's sideways. And this is the hot water valve. And we'll turn that off. So these valves isolate the water heater. So now the water heater is absolutely isolated. The next valves right above them, the smaller blue and red valves, are what's called the service valves. And they're called service valves because you use them to service your water heater. So what we're going to do is remove these caps off of the service valves. 
we're going to hook hoses up to them and then just open them to allow the water heater to drain into a five gallon bucket. After we have the hoses connected, we're just going to open both valves. And you'll see it start to drain. We'll let the water heater drain for a few minutes until we don't see any more water coming out the bottom. And then we're ready to clean out the filters at the base of the heater. All right, well, we have the water heater drained. We have the isolation valves off. The next thing we're going to do is take out the coal water filter, which is right here above the coal water isolation valve. It's usually a channel lock to just open it slightly. We'll undo that. I like to have a bucket underneath it in case a little bit of water wants to drain out. And as you can see, there's a little bit of residue on the filter, a little bit of brown discoloration little bit of garbage, not much for having been installed for a year. There's almost no debris, but enough that we want to take time and clean that out with the toothbrush. All right, the filter's totally clean, and we're just going to go ahead and put it right back in where it was. Tighten it up by hand, and then just add another eighth of a turn with your channel locks. The last thing that there is that we need to hands-on physically clean in this heater is what's called the dirt trap. And it's called that for a reason. There's a pin right here. You pull the pin out completely and set that down. Pull the trap straight down and again there should be an o-ring on it. And as you can see this o-ring was almost coming off the trap. So we want that seated all the way down to that first layer. And then as you can see inside the dirt trap, there's a little bit of dirt in there. So we're just going to run that in some water, clean it out, and reinsert it. So the next step of this process is to descale the heat exchanger. And what we're going to do is we're going to run vinegar through the system. It's going to pull the scaling out of the inside of the heater and make it clean like it was new. So step one, we're going to take both gallons of vinegar and we're going to dump them into our five gallon bucket. So step two is we're going to use a sump pump and you want to use a small enough horsepower sump pump that it actually has hose threads on top of the pump. And then we're going to take the hose from our cold side of the water heater and we're going to connect it to the top of the pump. It's very important that you use the cold side to connect to the pump so that we're pumping water through the hose and it's going into the heater through the cold side. You don't want to do it into the hot side. It wasn't made to operate like that. Then we're going to take the pump. We're going to set it in our bucket of white vinegar and we're going to plug it in. Before we do so, we want to make sure that we have the return side pointing into the five gallon bucket because what this is going to do, it's going to pump the white vinegar into the cold side up through the water heater and out the hot side. So before you begin this, you want to make sure that you have your large valves in the off position and then your service valves in the on position. So they're on so the fluid can run through the cold water valve, through the heater, and out the hot water valve. So now we're just going to plug in the sump pump so that it can start cycling the vinegar through. So now that the vinegar is running through the cold side and out the hot side, we let it run for 45 minutes is what's required to totally clean out the heat exchanger. So we're just going to walk away and let this pump for 45 minutes. So the final step is to flush out the system, get all the vinegar out of it. And to do so, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off both of the service valves. on Both the cold side and the hot side. And remove the hoses to the cold side and the hot side. And then we're going to connect a regular garden hose to the hot side service valve. So this hose goes to a floor drain in this situation, but you can dump it into a laundry tub or a floor drain, any plumbing receptor in your house. 
and we're going to push water through the system. We're going to leave the isolation valve on the hot side in the off position. And we're going to open the service port in the hot side and we'll open the isolation valve on the cold side, therefore pushing water into the system and having it come out the hot service port. So now we flush the vinegar out of the system and the next thing that we're going to do is take this service valve in the hot side, turn it back off. We're going to remove the service hose and then we're going to recap the service ports. Spin those caps back on the hot side, spin it on the cold side, leave the service ports in the off position and we'll turn the water on to the heater, turn the water, the hot water on to the rest of the house and now we're ready to put the cover on the heater, turn the gas on, and hit the power button, and we'll be back in business. Thanks for watching the video, and do take care of your heater. Do this every year, at a very minimum, every other year. It's basically the equivalent of changing the oil in your car. Um, it's an expensive investment. You want to take good care of it, and we want to take care of you. So thanks for watching.